Good evening. Um, we're here at Calvary Baptist Church in Locksburg, California. This is our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And I'd like to invite you to take your Bible as we begin a study of the Word of God. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, we're going to begin reading with verse 19 through verse 24. Uh, we always uh, like, if we can, uh, not something I can do readily right now, but the rest of us to stand in the reading of God's wonderful and precious word. Matthew chapter 6, uh, and we're going to begin with reading with verse 19. We've been studying in uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and so we're thankful for each section that we have the privilege of coming to. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust must destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The body, the lamp of the body, is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or money, or those kinds of things. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of coming together tonight. Thank you as we have the privilege also of going through your precious word, of knowing that you have spoken to us, and that you have given us thy Holy Spirit, uh, who guides and directs us, uh, illuminates the Bible, the Word of God, teaches us, admonishes us. And so we do pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit's ministry in our hearts tonight. We do pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will guide me that I might be able to share those things that you would have us to see tonight for our edification, uh, for a closer walk with Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Most of us are accustomed to dividing the spiritual and the material. Uh, the material. But Jesus never made such a division. Uh, in many of his parables, he made it clear that a right attitude towards wealth was actually a mark of true spirituality. How you handled wealth, how you handled what you had. Uh, and so we, when, when we come to a passage like this, I think it's, in, it's important that we understand that we're not talking about great wealth. It's talking about whatever we do have. Uh, and you know, you realize for us, all of us have great wealth compared to most of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you travel around in different parts of the world. Some of you have been in different parts and you know uh, the poverty that people live in. Uh, by the way, one of the things that has impressed me uh, in places where, and with uh, God's people, uh, the poverty is great, and yet they're so content and happy, rejoicing in the Lord. It's just glorious, wonderful. And uh, we, sorry to say, we, uh, in our country, in, in Western Hemisphere, we have a tendency to be uh, upset about just the littlest thing. Now, I'm not happy about the gas prices. <laughs> but you know, of course, I have to tell you, I haven't filled up the car in four weeks. So, but uh, 
I may go to the gas station and have a heart attack one of these days. <laughs> You'll have to come and get me. But you know, there's a lot other more things that are so vitally important. Now, the Pharisees were covetous. Uh, and they often, not all the time, but they often used religion to make money. Remember when Jesus had to cleanse the temple? Uh, it was primarily the Pharisees uh, and others who were running the, the business in there. Uh, it was collecting from those who came to sell sheep and doves <laughs> and, and uh, all those things, the money changers. If we have the true righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, poverty, uh, 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 then we'll have a proper attitude toward material wealth. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the Lord is really guiding in our lives, if, we, if we're walking in the Spirit, then however much we have or don't have, uh, we will respond correctly. And we will not only respond as far as what we have, but as far as what others have. Because we're always going to come across people who have more than us, we're going to come across people who have less than us. And uh, God's the one who makes those decisions. Now, nowhere did Jesus magnify poverty. You know, there, there have been historically over the years those who have come along and, and, and uh, said, oh, you know, you can't have anything. You need to get rid of everything. You need to be, live in poverty. And, and Jesus never said that. Never. He also uh, never criticized legitimate getting of wealth. And if you think about it in the Bible, you, you think of some of the... Uh, Prime people in the Bible were wealthy people. Job. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham. David. Solomon. And on we can go. Uh, and that they, they were always in the Bible an indication of God's blessing. But if we don't have wealth, that doesn't mean God isn't blessing us. That's the other thing we have. The problem today is there are those who said, you know, that, that if you want God's blessing, he will... You know, he'll give you wealth, he'll give you those things. That's his blessing. Uh, it may or may not be. He may not want you to have that. Uh, he knows us. He knows what we can handle and not handle. Um, and, and God knows what we need. He made all things. He made food, he made clothing and precious metals. Mm -hmm. So he knows what we need. And he knows we need certain things. In fact, if you'll notice down in verse 60 or 32, uh, in the same chapter. He says, For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Now, this is all the stuff he's going to, we're going to cover later on. This is what the Gentiles, the unsaved, he's saying. This is what they're always seeking after. They're always seeking these things. And then he says, For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He doesn't condemn it. He just says, Listen, the Father knows what you need. He needs, you know these things. He knows, he knows you need food and, and housing and all those things. He knows that. In fact, he has given us, the Bible says in 1 Timothy, he's given to us richly all things to enjoy. <clears throat> Think about that for a moment. He has given to us all things to enjoy. I think that's another area we struggle with. We, we have something, we, God provides something, and then sometimes we, we maybe feel guilty, uh, and then we don't enjoy it. But he's given us what he desires for us, and, and he says to enjoy it. Do we always do that? I think sometimes we, we do get guilty, don't we? I have too much. It's not wrong to possess things. It's not wrong. Um, but it is wrong for things to possess us. I remember, I haven't been saved very long, I remember hearing this illustration, it was an old one. Uh, they used to tell how in certain parts of Africa they would, uh, they would want to catch monkeys for different reasons, we won't get into that. And they're not easy to catch. And so, in one area of Africa, they would actually dig a hole 
in the ground and they would put a nut in it or whatever the monkeys liked and they would go after it. Now the hole was big enough that the monkey could take his hand and put it down in there. And then he would grab that item, but he couldn't pull his hand out. How did they catch him? He would never take let go of it. Once he got that, he would not let it go. We need to hold lightly what we have. Whatever God gives us, we need to hold it lightly. Don't grasp it. Because like the monkey, it'll catch us. <clears throat> the sin of idolatry is as dangerous as the sin of hypocrisy. There are many warnings in the Bible against covetousness. I'm just going to have us go to two of them very quickly. Mark chapter 7 and verses 21 through 23. Mark 7, 21 through 23. All these things, evil, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. I'm sorry, I started at the wrong place. I apologize. Let me start at verse 21. That's where you started. <coughs> Jesus says, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things, evil things come from within and defile a man. Now we look at all those others there and all of a sudden in the middle of it he says covetousness. We wouldn't have put them in the same place, would we? No. We say, well, okay, there's covetousness and then there's all these other terrible sins. But, well, this is a sin but it's not that bad. <laughs> but Jesus says it is. And then if you go over to Luke chapter 12, And uh, verse 15, Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. You know, on the 101, we have, a, we have signs set up. And they, they tell us how long it is to get to Sears Point or Nevada or Santa Rosa or something. And it tells us when there's an accident. It tells us all these things. Wouldn't that have been an interesting verse to put up there? As all these people go by. <laughs> Life is not in the things you possess. <laughs> I thought they'd be calling up the uh, ODOT and telling them to, not ODOT, what do we call it here in California? <clears throat> Highway Patrol. Highway. Shut that sign down. <laughs> Three things I want to point out from verses 19 through 24. Number one, materialism will enslave your heart. He says here, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If our heart loves material things, and put earthly gain above heavenly investments, then the result is really going to be tragic. Now that doesn't mean, God isn't saying here that you don't put aside for retirement, he doesn't say that you don't put aside for a rainy day. He doesn't say that you don't uh, put money aside so you can repair your car or pay your taxes or any of those things. That's not what he's talking about. But what he is talking about is the attitude towards those things. Treasures on earth can be used by God and used for him. But if we gather material things just for ourselves, we'll lose them. And we'll lose our heart with them. I, I see, you know, people accumulate all the different things. I, I talked 
talk about their toys. Uh, sometimes joke on Sunday morning, uh, as we're coming to church, I see somebody go by pulling their dog with them <laughs> behind their vehicle. <laughs> but they, you know, it's, it's just accumulation. I may be the only person on the block who actually can hit, park in my garage because everybody else's garage is filled with things. Now, don't, I'm not picking on you if your garage is filled with things. But, you know, that seems to be the way we, we, we go, isn't it? And so instead of spiritual enrichment, we experience really uh, impoverishment. So what does it mean to lay up treasure in heaven? Well, it means to use all that we have for the glory of God, whatever it might be. Everything we have should be used for God's glory. Your car, your home, everything. Um, I, I've always tried to remind myself and my family, our house belongs to the Lord. It's his house, not mine. And so it's to, to be used for him. Uh, it, it's, it's there for his use. Uh, it's a joy, and I, I look back and, and think of the, the joy of, of the people we've had in our home over the years. Um, missionaries, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing, nothing like having a missionary in your home. Oh. There's nothing like it. <laughs> now, not everybody can do that. I understand that. You know, if you have a one bedroom or something, you're kind of stuck. But whatever we have, our car, you know, when I see somebody uh, in the body of Christ driving somebody else in the body of Christ somewhere, they're using their car for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. They're serving the Lord and they're serving others. Um, we need to, as I said before, you know, hold gently, don't hold tight the things that we have. They're not going to last. They're just not going to last. It also means measuring life by the true riches of the kingdom, not by false riches of this world. So if we're going to have treasures in heaven, it's how we use what God gives us here on earth for his glory. Uh, for the proclamation of the gospel. Uh, for the reaching of the lost. Uh, all those things. That's, that's what God wants us to do. And not only here, but around the world. Number two, wealth not only enslaves the heart, it also enslaves the mind. Uh, verse 22 says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. God's word sometimes uses the eye to represent the attitude of the mind. Um, if the eye is properly focused on the light, uh, the body can function properly in its movements. I, I've noticed since the surgery that I have to be, you know, sometimes you, you close your eyes, you're doing something, you close your eyes, you don't think too much of it, you're standing because, you know, you're fine. All of a sudden I realize that I have to be real careful because I get disorientated uh, and, and not everything is as stable as it should be, or at least I'm not sure it is. And so, you know, you, you close your eyes and go, ah, but when they're open, it stabilizes you and the light comes in. That's what we need, light. But if the eye is out of focus, uh, say, seeing double, then we have unsteady movements, isn't it? And we, we, we're going to have problems. It, it's most difficult to make progress while we're looking in two directions at the same time. And we have a tendency sometimes to do that. We're looking towards this, we're looking towards that. If our main aim in life is to get material gain. It means darkness within. That's what he's saying. If that's what we're focused on, <clears throat> then we're really filling ourselves with darkness. 
But if our outlook is to serve and glorify God, then there will be light within. Uh, and spiritually we can see as we should be able to. If what we should, would be light is really darkness, and that's what he's saying here in the last verse. He says, you know, what, what you're receiving, what you're believing, if it's really darkness instead of light, how dark is that darkness? Mm -hmm. It's worse mm -hmm. than just darkness. Mm -hmm. And finally, materialism can enslave our wills. Verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. And that served God and man. And I think most of us understand that. We, <clears throat> if you've ever ended up having more than one job at the same time, that's a real struggle. And sometimes the one job will overlap with the other job. And here you are, I'm supposed to be at such and such, you know, at six o'clock, and here it's getting to be close to six, and my boss is saying, well, I need you to work longer. And there you are between that. So that's that picture. Can't serve two masters successfully. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have two jobs, but it's not an easy thing to do. It's pretty tough. We cannot serve two masters simultaneously. And what Jesus is really saying here is, it's either going to be Jesus Christ is our Lord, or money is our Lord, or material things is our Lord. What is going to be the master in our lives? It's a matter of the will. This is a choice we make. It doesn't come naturally. It's not something that's easy to, to deal with. Uh, but it does. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the lottery. I think it's the state lottery. Uh, it robs actually people who can't afford it. It really does. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, but people have to make a decision on those things. Because it's flash for you. Look at how much money you might get. Wow. And so they go in and they keep on playing it. Uh, I grew up in a, in a home that gambled, a family that gambled, I should put it that way. Every, every one of our homes had a carousel with chips in it and two decks of cards. And all of our tables, the dining room tables, had... Um, pads on them and we would flip them over after a meal so that we had the green felt up on top every, every family that I grew up with all of our family and out would come the chips and we gambled my uncles as soon as I was able they got me all dressed up they'd take me to the racetracks and they get me dressed up. I wasn't old enough, but they got me dressed up to look as old as I could, and so I could go and place all the bets. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when I was, I remember in Ohio when the lottery first came, and somebody came and asked me. They said, "If I won the lottery, uh, should I give ten percent?" I said, "Well, don't give it to us." They said, "What?" I said, I don't want it. We don't want it. Don't give it to us. Mm -hmm. That's dirty money. That's blood money. Mm -hmm. that's, that's stolen from other people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a shocker, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You don't want that money? I, I, I don't know how many people over the years. Have... <laughs> you really don't want that money? No. I don't want you to do it either. <laughs> but you have to make the choice. They have to make that will. Paul, writing to Timothy, says that those who want 
to get rich fall into temptation and a snare. Those who want to get rich fall into a temptation and a snare. If God grants riches and we use them for his glory, then riches are a blessing. And it doesn't matter how much that is. Uh, you know, someday uh, the federal government, the IRS, will finally do all of our taxes that are due from like two or three years ago, and you're going to have a windfall, maybe. Mm -hmm. But how do we use it? Now, maybe there are things that have to be taken care of. Um, there may be other things that we can do for the Lord. How do we use those things? But if our will is to get rich, if that's our focus, if that's what we spend so much of our time on, and we live with that outlook, we're going to pay a great price for those riches. They're going to cost us dearly. So materialism enslaves the heart. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Materialism can enslave the mind. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your light is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Mm -hmm. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And materialism can <coughs> enslave our will. <coughs> no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate, excuse me, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We can become shackled by the material things of life, but we ought to be liberated and controlled by the Spirit so that we can able to use what God gives us for His glory and honor and for our blessing. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful, I think, Lord, as we read the Word. And you know, Lord, if we compare it to anything else in the world, this is the wisdom of God. We can read other so-called <laughs> holy books and writings, and so much of what they say is a jumble and foolishness. And uh, the, the wisdom of man. But here we have the wisdom of God. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings you give us. We thank you for the things that you give us. We thank you for the, uh, the privilege of, of, of being blessed in a very special way, materially. But Lord, we do not want to be consumed by the things of this world. May we hold on to them very lightly. And what we have, may we use it to thy glory, being guided by thy spirit, in ways that will bring glory to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.